Hi guys, George here with another uh, video. This time it's not an AAR. I decided to go to the format of a quick tips and tricks uh, video. Um, so the purpose of this video is to give you the most amount of information uh, in the least amount of time because time is valuable. Now the uh, scenario that I'm going to analyze is a Yank scenario, scenario 11, Defiance on Hill 30. So essentially what this uh, scenario is about is a uh, parachute landing that had gone wrong for the Americans near Pont de la Bair, France, 8th June 1944. So you have Lieutenant Colonel Stanley and his troops trying to take a bridge. They're not successful. They fall back to a, a, uh, a position where they can defend and the Germans are attacking, trying to take advantage and initiative in the situation. And of course, the Americans say, we'll have nothing of that. We're going to fight you back and hopefully succeed. Um, so that's the, the quick, uh, the quick uh, overview of the historical scenario. Uh, in terms of victory conditions, it's important to understand that uh, occupying uh, w more uh, one more hex location, victory hex location, than the other player is important. And uh, you have to be mindful of the casualty victory points that are, you are amassing. So essentially, as the uh, American player, you have to ensure that you keep your troops safe while inflicting the maximum amount of damage to the attacker, while all, the, uh, all along... Uh, making sure that your opponent does not come close to the victory hex locations. All right, so to do that, you only have four uh, paratroop squads, which are elite units, and one half squad to begin with, and two leaders in terms of support weapons are limited uh, in the respect that uh, here you, you only have one MMG and two bazookas and a mortar. Now, the mortar can be... Can be can be very useful because it has a high rate of fire of uh, three. Uh, your your joker or your ace in the card uh, is the 12 concealment dummy markers, uh, two foxholes. And uh, your reinforcements come in either on turn four or five, depending on a random die roll. As the German, you have 12 squads. Now, I think for both sides, the attacker and the defender, deployment is of paramount, paramount uh, importance. However, you have to use that deployment wisely. I'll talk more about that later. So 12 squads, what's important here are the minus one combination of two leaders with the same uh, factor. And what that, that means to me is that I can combine them in a fire group, uh, benefiting the uh, getting a benefit of the uh, of the minus one DRM, and then also forcing the, your opponent to split up his firepower against your troops. I am dead fast against stacking, but stacking can be useful at times. But having that luxury of making a fire group with two similar uh, powerful leaders is even better. And I strongly recommend that. However, in this scenario, circumstances dictate that you may not want to, to do that as well. So I'll tell you what uh, I'm talking about. All right, so let's go to the SSF, the Vassal Scenario file, which is the most convenient way for me to convey all the information to you. Here you have the map board look. I am using Neil Uden's uh, uh, HTML. Um, um, HTML uh, table to create these beautiful graphics to impress my opponent. And actually, my opponent uh, uh, uses it rather better than I do. Um, I know that in the scenario card that he activated, he also had the uh, the uh, uh, he also not in this. It's not applicable for this scenario, but in other scenarios, he also puts the the. Uh, armor information here, which is also critical. So let's take a look at the the, uh, the uh, American uh, setup first and, and what kind of choices that does the American have, okay? All right, so we're talking about trying to set up these troops right here. I'm gonna try and grab them all and move them 
closer to their location where they need to be set up. Okay. Now, um, generally speaking, let's put them just on the side. So generally speaking, and uh, Mr. Quincy does not belong there because he's the balance for the uh, Americans, right? Generally speaking, you have two or three choices. Uh, either a forward defense, right? Or a rear defense. You have to set up in this circle here. And uh, you got to use the concealment counters to the best of your advantage. Um, having played this scenario as both sides, I believe officially I had lost as the Americans won as the Germans. Uh, so I played this game against uh, Dennis Freeberg. I think we both won in both circumstances as the Germans, and I think our German tactics were were on the money. Uh, but as the Americans, we were not. I'm also playing rather slowly uh, this game with uh, Ken Rutkowski every Wednesday night, and uh, he is playing the Americans rather well. So let's see what I can suggest for the American player to do. Well, for the American player, it's almost uh, to your benefit to set up a MG with a with either a full squad or a half squad here, up here, uh, and the eight minus one leader. The reason being is you're basically forfeiting any attack. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, yeah zoom in and do a line of sight check as a defender. We are allowed. You're you're forfeiting uh, a frontal assault for sure, right? And a flanking attack from the uh, German right it can be devastated, especially if you keep rate of fire on the MG. And left flank, you got it covered for the most part, except up close and personal, right? So this is a very great uh, location to have the, um, the MG. In terms of the mortar, I had initially placed it here, but as you can see, uh, if you place it there, you're cutting off the mortar from being able to cover uh, most of the German left flank, but you basically have the front and the German right covered, right? Okay, that's if you put it there. Now, if you put it here, it's a bit more advantageous, I think. And maybe not, maybe not. Because if we t do another line of sight check, you do have, uh, oh yeah, you, you got up to this area here, okay, this area here, you really got it, you really got it covered, uh, I guess, in the initial uh, uh, advance, you have most of the front covered and most of, well, most of the uh, right, uh, so in terms of the mortar, I would put it with a half squad and maybe the 8-0 leader there, or you may want to keep the 8-0 leader, leader in the rear to just help rally the, the squads in case they, they can route. And this is an excellent location because uh, American units can route back. If you choose a forward defense, they can ultimately route back to here in one way or another. Okay, so the mortar, either here or there. An alternative uh, item to do is um, is put the MG here, right? And you can do a fire lane between here and there. Not much of a fire lane, but enough. Um, or or you can put them already in a shell hole, and then you've got a fire lane here or a fire lane there. Um, that's something to think about as well. Um, and and these locations are, are probably something that the uh, German player will, would not anticipate, which is what I usually like to do is to, to take advantage of situations or circumstances where uh, your opponent did not expect your move. Uh, in terms of situating your sniper, it can pretty much go everywhere because the German player starts off board, and then we have 
couple of more squads here. So, um, not a lot of squads to, to begin with. Now, you would say, oh, let's put the squads in here. Right? Now, you can choose to, to put the squads in, in, um, in two of the victory locations, if you, if you will. However, the squad with the bazooka, I would highly recommend that you put that squad uh, in a woods location. So what do I mean by a woods location? You got a location here. Now, what does that, this mean? If I put that squad here with a bazooka there, he's in the woods, he doesn't have to incur backblast, and he can cover all three, well, not this one, but he can cover two, three out of the one, two, three, four uh, victory locations with that bazooka alone. Well, Firing his inherent firepower at another target. Oh, there's two bazookas, right? Okay, great. So this fellow here, he can go right there. And he now covers this location as well. Or alternatively, um, you could still put the uh, mortar up there. And he will get a plus two, at least a plus, uh, plus one uh, uh, modifier for being uh, up on the hill uh, to be perfectly frank with you, I'm not a rules expert, and um, I'm not sure if he would also get uh, emplacement for the mortar, and put that uh, foxhole there, put him up there. Now he can cover a range of two, uh, the, the house with the bazooka, and fires inherent firepower somewhere else as well. So as the American, you have a great, a great amount of choices. This would be characterized as a rear defense. A forward defense would entail uh, you setting up really up close and you're taking a, a bit of a gamble, right? And again, I'm putting that bazooka out in the open, right? And you're taking a bit of a gamble that the uh, German player will not amass uh, enough firepower here or you will be able to break up any fire groups that form and stall the uh, German assault until your reinforcements come in either on turn four or five depending on your dial uh, and again using these concealment counters is going to you're going to have to do it in such a way that you're going to fool the uh, the uh, German player and don't forget these concealment counters are in addition to your OB they're dummy stacks right so they do not limit the amount of of uh, concealment counters you use um, for the American OB. And don't forget that your foxholes start hip um, because they're part of the fortification categories. Hey, let's have a little bit of Joe here. Two creams, one splenda. All right. Now, having said that for the uh, Americans, uh, I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to go uh, into how your reinforcements arrive, but you have a lot of choices as well. You can come in through here and use bypass movement if the German player comes up here. This is an ideal road to come in, and this is an ideal road to come in, provided the German has not captured any uh, of the hexes overlooking the hill. So this gives you a, a little clue as to how I'm going to talk about the Germans. Now, Good thing about this scenario is you have the whole uh, whole edge of the bo uh, board four here to enter, so you can deploy wisely. Um, right. So in terms of deployment, um, you are to, allowed to deploy uh, ten percent of your OB fractions rounded up. Um, good idea would be to deploy at least one squad so they can uh, carry the, the dismantled MGs to their proper location. Uh, it, it makes them inconspicuous, inconspicuous and, um, and, um, and probably will not make them a vulnerable kick, uh, uh, target for the uh, American player. Well, You are a, a bit of, at a disadvantage as the German player here because 
the 747s are notoriously uh, units that I don't like dealing with, really. And in close combat, they have a, a, a bit of an, an advantage. And uh, if you have squad this, if the German, if the American player decides to deploy and half squads this, and let's clone him. All right, you have a point blank attack. The American player get you provide the American player with the opportunity to do a point blank attack right here. His firepower is doubled. It's six down two, right? Uh, as opposed to if you deploy a German squad, half squad, okay. And clone, there you go. A point blank attack against him is a four down two. Makes a big difference. Okay, so basically, what you need to do here as the German player is absolutely try a flanking maneuver and try to get some forces up on this three hill hexes as uh, quietly and as eventful as possible. Um, the the um, the mortar is your primary um, tool for attack. Your primary tool for attack from from the rear. So, what I would suggest uh, to do as the um, German players, first of all, make sure you allocate the MMGs correctly, and uh, it's a tactic that. Um, I really do not like to prescribe to, okay? But I think what I am suggesting here is a three-prong attack, and, and it is a bit of a risky maneuver, right? It's nothing safe <laughs> if you're splitting up your forces, okay? So three-prong attack. Uh, put that squad there and uh, these boys need some MMGs right hold up on that put this dude here put this dude here put this dude here and then uh, let's put those LMGs on on top of the squad. Okay. And then let's make sure we're not overstacked. There you go. Here. We're not overstacked. And here. All right. That's good. We'll put the uh, 80 liter here. Okay. This is good. That's good. This is great. So the nine minus one liter on top there. Eight minus one here, and the eight oh there. Okay, so it's a three prong attack. Each fire group has a mission. I am not going to advance them in a stack because I'm afraid the German player, I mean the American player, will get right on this MMG and start uh, whacking me. Right. So I'd like to ideally uh, come in, go CX, bring up first the. Uh, the dismantled MMG, hold on. Let's, let's put them out of the stack and dexterity issues here, we're getting old. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. He might lose concealment. Do you want to attack him? Go right ahead. He's uh, actually the American player will be worried about what's going to happen here, right? So you let's say you advance there, you you were stripped of concealment, big deal. You continue to advance, right? You continue to advance with the objective of coming up this hill and eventually uh, getting into these hexes to thwart any reinforcements from coming in on the board. Um, this stack here, basically, 
we'd like to advance up in this direction and form a fire base around here where the, the amount of hindrances to the objective are uh, few and it gives you a good, um, good range on this unit to, so you can eliminate them and then do a flanking move onto your victory objectives. And these guys here will uh, eventually advance to these woods and continue to gradually advance in this direction and take the right flank. So you essentially make a pincer movement in the uh, victory objective. And uh, be careful, after you reach this area here, if the uh, American player hasn't fired you on you yet, you'll be in a blind hex area. It will allow you to safely advance into here. Now you've got some hindrances. You advance, 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 advance. And we're talking about advanced phase advance, right? And an assault move. Uh, and, um, oops. And eventually, once you, you reach these woods, you can safely come to this board edge, to, the, to, the, to this area here, where you can exert a lot of firepower. If you are broken, you simply retreat back to the woods, regroup, and attack again. And um, the biggest joker in all this are the snipers, right? So in this game, the American has a San 4 and a San 3, and these guys can uh, change the game dramat dramatically, especially if they start taking out leaders, breaking squads on their own, and whatnot. Conclusion, overall, it's a great scenario. It, it's a wonderful experience. It, uh, it is a, it's great to play, and uh, you will not get tired of playing it over and over again, um, except if you finally had enough you know, of all this excitement, and then you want a different, uh, a, a different uh, experience uh, altogether. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the scenario. I think I may have gone overboard on the time. I, I did say 10, uh, 10 minutes, but um, I sure had fun uh, relaying to you this information. And I hope you, it helps you out to the greatest extent possible. Uh, good luck. Roll low and like and subscribe. Thank you to all the new subscribers. I appreciate you all. Take care.